All right, y'all. <laughs> the time I went to jail, part two. This may have some end up being three videos. I don't know, because when I gathered my thoughts and started um recalling this, it's, it's just so much happened. <laughs> it's amazing that I can laugh about this now because it really was a traumatic experience. So anyway, I left off with just telling y'all I was at the East Point precinct and I'm sitting over here on this bench in the back and it's just me and, and the, and the uh, officers that were back there. And I'm thinking that was the end of the line, right? I'm just supposed to sit here until, until I go home. Child, no. So the one officer had told the other ones, y'all stop cussing. You know, they start he started talking about church and they were like, man, you don't even go to church. You don't know the last time. But he was like, well, I might start back, you know. And he was really sincere, y'all. I think at that moment, that man realized, like, you know what? She probably innocent for real. Everybody, I would assume, says that they're innocent and that, that there was a mix-up. I'm sure everybody say that. But I think it, it was then he really realized, like, this girl probably, she probably telling the truth about what happened. So, from there, East Point Precinct. I find out I got to go to downtown Atlanta. <laughs> so they put me in the back of this big black van thing. I guess where they transport, you know, I, I don't know. Was I considered an inmate? I don't know what the terminology is. I get, I don't think I was an inmate. You have to be like proven guilty to be, honey, I don't know, honey. Anyway, People in handcuffs, all right? So they put me in the back of this thing, y'all. Ain't no windows on it. And it's pitch black, okay? And it's literally enough room for you to sit down and your knees are touching the wall or whatever it is in front of you. And I'm like, uh, so it was a lady officer that was driving me. And I'm like, it's dark back here. She's like, well, the light only comes on when you when I stop at a stoplight. And it's literally, it's like a little flash. So it comes on and then it goes back off. I guess that's for security purposes or something. I have not tried to research uh, why they do the things. I don't care. All right. I, 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 I tell people this. I will never, I'm not going to jail no more. For nobody. Don't you commit no crime around me? Don't tell me about no crime that you've committed. Okay? Because I will turn state's evidence against you. If it's between me or you, one of us got to go to jail. It's going to be you. Unless you are a client and then, you know, we're both covered in, in the confidentiality. But just regular people outside of uh, therapy sessions and stuff. Don't you come tell me your, your business, honey. Because if they say you better give up, give this person up or you going to jail, sugar, I'm going to hand you over. You hear? Because I ain't going through that no more. <laughs> No. So, um, I guess the whole purpose of that is to keep you disoriented. So yeah, I guess so you can't break out or something. That's how I know all these little stuff that be shown on TV with these prison breaks and stuff. It's so fake. So, uh, by the time they drive you to, to downtown Atlanta, wherever that is, you are already on the inside. The whole truck goes to the inside of the jail. So you don't know, you don't know where you are literally. Um, and that is a mind game within itself, like the, the, just the loss of control. So here I am getting mug shots, child, and, uh, I'm st by this time I was calmer, but I was still crying. I think I probably cried all the way from Sunday night to Tuesday morning when I finally got home and then I cried again. So, uh, I was, I was still crying and I uh, did these mug shots. Now here I am y'all. Uh, I had gone to a Sunday evening service at church. So, baby, I'm sitting up in jail with, uh, I had on like a, one of these peasant skirts that flowed out. It was light blue. And I had on a yellow cardigan over it, honey. So, I'm sitting up here in jail looking like Evangelist Missionary Black Mary Poppins. That's literally how I look, y'all. Complete with, with a slip on under it and stockings. I had on stockings. I stuck out like a sore thumb, okay? So they take me into this place where it's men and women in here, but all the men back there, all the women are over here. And I'm hearing the guards talk about, well, you know, what time are they going upstairs? What is, what, what pray tell is upstairs? What is this, what does this mean? What is this upstairs of which you speak? Okay, because I'm not trying to go up no stairs. So they uh, bring people in there, I guess, for processing or whatever. Then they give you a bedroll, a little blanket and whatever else. And you, you, you have to go upstairs. So I'm like, uh, let me try to understand this. This is from a stop sign that I did not run. 
I'm finna have to be upstairs with all of the other random people that y'all arrested tonight. So I detriment is in my head. Like, okay, at any moment, I'm probably going to get shanked and or I'm gonna have to fight somebody because you know somebody's gonna attack me. Like I this is it. Like I don't know how my life is going to recover from this. This is <laughs> this is the beginning of the end for me. This is the beginning of a life of crime. I am officially a prisoner. I have an inmate number. All of this stuff is going through my head. Baby, let me tell y'all how God showed out. I get ready to go to fingerprinting. I still don't know this woman's name who was doing my fingerprinting. She didn't know me from Adam. This lady is, you know, because they had to, for, for those that ain't never been through this, they had to pick up your hand and, you know, put your fingers on. They got to do it a certain way. She is fingerprinting me, y'all, and I'm crying. I ain't said nothing to her. And she said, this is nothing for you. You fine. You're going to be all right. This is going to be a story. This this a testimony for you. And I'm like, Lord, where is, who is this woman? Why is she saying all this? She said, this is nothing. She said, don't you let this hinder you. She said, don't you let this get in your mind. Don't you let this think this is not the end for you. This is nothing. She said, this is going to be over for you before you know it. And this ain't going to be nothing but a memory. Like It was like God was just, who y'all speaking to this woman to calm down my fears. This is how I have uh, such a, a an understanding of anxiety. I know what it can do to you, okay? And how you cannot just, it's just not just an easy turn off, all right? So this woman fingerprinting me is speaking into my life at this moment. She didn't know me from Adam and she's speaking into my life saying, this is nothing, this is gonna pass. This is gonna be a memory. You're gonna be telling other folks this story. Am I not sitting here seven years later telling y'all this story, baby? That was only the beginning. So <laughs> I go sit down. I have on my coat and all my stuff. And y'all, I'm sitting up straight erect, honey, because I didn't already decide I ain't going to sleep. I ain't going to drink no water because I decided in my mind it's jail water. I decided I wasn't going to eat no food because it's jail food. I didn't, I, and I didn't want to have to go to the bathroom for any reason. I didn't even want to know what the bathroom situation was like. You understand? So I said, I wouldn't put nothing in my body. I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> what is upstairs and what does that mean? So I'm sitting down up here towards the front because I'm trying to see as close to the guards as possible in case anything pop off. Uh, and one of the, the guards walks up to me and he says, uh, I heard that you're working on your master's degree. Now, I, I didn't already told you, I ain't talking to nobody in here. So I don't even know where he got that from. I said, yes, sir, I am. Because he was, he was kind of a, you know, middle-aged gentleman. And, um, and I just always say, sir, to cops, I don't care if they, if they 18. Okay. Cause I, I just don't want to go to jail. All right. And so, so I just, I just be respectful. So he, so I said, yes, I am. And he said, um, he said, what you doing in my jail? I didn't catch that when he said my jail, I'm just talking. So I started telling him the story and I'm like, <laughs> I'm about to well up the tears coming back. Cause I had dried my tears after the lady spoke into my life. I, and here come the tears come back. He said, uh-uh, 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 don't you cry, don't you cry. He said, I don't want you to worry about a thing. Y'all, I BS you not, okay? He said, I don't want you to worry about one thing. He said, you are going to be fine. Nothing is going to happen to you. You are going to be well protected the whole time that you're in here. He said, you're not going upstairs. Not, this man didn't know nothing about what was going on in my head. Y'all, when I tell you, I, I, I'm getting excited because God is so real. Oh my God, he's so real. So this man said, you're not going upstairs. Don't worry about it. He said, I don't care when you when you got to go to court. I don't care what the situation is. You're going to sit right here in this spot until they straighten out what's going on with you. And I said, okay, thank you. He said, anything that you need from anybody on any shift. He said, I want you to walk up there and ask for it. And you got it. I said, okay. You know, later I found out that he was, I guess, the lieutenant, wh whatever you call it. When he said my jail, that's what he meant. Like he was literally just making rounds. I didn't see that man the whole rest of the time that I was in there. But he told everybody uh, to pass the word on every shift that that girl right there is not to be touched. Y'all better watch out for her. You better protect her. Anything she need, you better give it to her. When they got ready for shift change the next morning, y'all, 
I heard one guard tell the other one, she doesn't go upstairs. She stays right there until, you know, whatever, whatever happens. And the guard said, well, who's she supposed to be? Why is she so, you know, what's up with her? And the other guard told her, she said, I don't know what the situation is. All I know is Lou said, I think that's short for Lieutenant, don't touch her. And if she need anything, we, we have to give it to her. So I got to, we all better spread that word on every ship. Lady was like, okay. The other guy was like, all right, fine. That is how protected I was in there. Now I will give a shout out to uh, my guy brother at the time was Atlanta PD. And he got up out of the bed. Now, by the time he came up, there was the middle of the night. He put his uniform on and he came up there. They wouldn't let him back there, of course. But I don't know if maybe because he just spread the word that, hey, she really not supposed to be up here. Because I don't know who he talked to. You know, and the word just got around. Whatever it was, baby, I know that God was with me. And I asked sometimes, well, why did this happen to me? Because I really was innocent. I ain't do nothing. <laughs> Sitting up in this jail with my church clothes on. Um... And I think sometimes, you know, you don't really even understand God's power. You don't even understand scriptures, some of them, until you go through some certain things, honey. So, because, lo, I am with you always. That came alive in my life that night. Because I'm telling y'all, I, I think jail is the, is the end of the world. I think it's, it's the end of the age. You understand? That scripture say, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. And, and I think prison may be a, a semblance of the end of age, okay? I mean, that just experience is crazy my younger brother i don't even know still to this day how he figured out which jail or where to go or any of that but anyway you know i was able to make phone calls but i couldn't tell him where i was i couldn't tell him no address because i didn't know um he sat on the other side they let me come up to talk to him through the glass y'all that man my younger brother we are best friends he's seven years younger than me he sat there the entire time until i was released he would not move. And I heard the guards talking and they said, well, her brother out there, and um, he need to go home because she ain't going nowhere. She can't leave. And the other, bro other guards said, I talked to him. That man ain't leaving his sister. And the guard, the other guy said, well, that's just dumb. Like it, he can't do nothing by sitting up here. And the guards, the other guy responds to him and said, y'all don't get it. He is not going to leave her. Period. Y'all might as well just leave him alone. Let him sit out there in that chair because he not going nowhere until his sister leaves here. Ah! Baby, catch the word. Catch it. Just catch it. Catch that word in this. Okay. So that was all of that was going on overnight on Sunday. Okay. So now I find out that I don't get to go to court until three o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. And court is via camera, like you're talking to a judge that's somewhere else. So now I got to go upstairs to, to the court. I never went to the upstairs. What I still don't know what upstairs means. I never had to experience that. But I did have to go up there to the court thing. And um, I went up there and all of the other people, you know, started whispering. What's going on? Da, 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 da. And this lady, one of the other, I don't know what to call people who are in that position. I, we weren't prisoners. What do we call? Whatever, honey. So one of the other women that had that was she had gotten into a fight or something, she ended up telling me. And um she said, she finally said, Hey, we've been talking. You don't supposed to be in here, do it. <laughs> she said, You don't look like nobody in here. Something about you just different. Y'all, y'all, if y'all ain't caught how real God is, you better catch it. She said, something about you just different. Um, you just, it's just something special about you. You don't, you really don't belong in here, do you? And I, and I told him like, nah, I don't, you know, it's a mix up, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I still at this point was really, really ready to go. Okay. Um, so then y'all. They had given us these this food. I already told y'all. I had decided I wouldn't eat no jail food. They gave us these bologna sandwiches and some cookies. While I'm sitting up here waiting um, to see the judge, a lady asked for my sandwich and my cookies. I didn't know what to do. All I could think about was that scene in the movie Life where he asked for his cornbread. Father, I'll be back with the next part in a minute, y'all. My God.